Hi, I'm Tony with MichiganCrowmolding.com's YouTube channel. In this particular video, I am going to go over how um, I install crown molding by myself. You can do it too. For instance, one of the scenes in this video, I install a bedroom that is roughly 15 by 14. So that means I'm putting up 15 foot pieces, 14 foot pieces by myself. It can be done and I'm going to show you. Not only that, I'm going to go over how to manipulate each corner. If you ever notice, if you ever tried it, you go to put the pieces up, you know you cut it right, you put them in the corner and they just don't fit. Well, I call making those work, manipulating each miter. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to manipulate miters. I'm not talking down other the, the, you know, the other YouTube channels, but most of the time the guys put the miters up and they already tested it first. They know they're gonna fit perfectly. So you really don't learn anything from that. In this video, it's gonna be real world situations. You're gonna watch me put the miters together and they're not gonna fit. And then I'm gonna make them fit. So I'm hoping you learned something uh, from this video. And if you like it, like it. And uh, if you uh, want, you can follow my channel because um, all my videos are going to be crown molding related. Again, I'm Tony with MichiganCrownMolding.com and I hope you enjoy the video. Thanks. Okay, here's uh, the bathroom. And yes, it is the bathroom. And if you notice, let me get up on the slider here. I've got my corners marked. So. I know where my pieces are going to go, which is extremely important if you're working by yourself. You have nobody to line up another piece with, especially in a larger room like a bedroom. You have nobody to help you line it up. So those marks will help me um, know exactly where the pieces need to go as I'm putting them up, you know. So let's get at it. I'm going to show you the first miter. Okay, here's the first piece here, and all I'm gonna do is set that on my, my mark. Could already tell we're gonna have slight issue. You can see the wall's kind of bent, but it's okay. As you'll see, I mean, you can see that it's just dipping big time, but oh well. A couple nails in that one. Now we're gonna look for our 8513. This is what'll tell us how bad we are. As you can see, there's that dip I was talking about. And uh, this one, this side looks good, so I'll put a couple nails in it so it don't move around. Take our trusty knocker. I think that's about as good as that one's going to get. Again, you can see that the miter's good. I can pop this out a little bit. Right there. Jim back there. And then it looks like it, it wants to come up a little bit more. Right about there. And we're gonna take 
and pull this side out a little bit too. it up right there now this corner is jacked there's nothing to do with the miter the miter is perfect and once that's cocked that miter is gonna look great you'll never see that imperfection in the ceiling On to the next miter. <clears throat> okay. Here is the third piece in this room. Let's see what we come up with here. Okay. Look at that. We'll see, we are not going to have a problem with this one. I'm not sure you can see the pencil lines from the uh, sample pieces that I put in first. You can see that I'm almost on that mark. Again, they're just a reference. I mean, but you should be close to them. So we're going to put that one right on the mark. Put a nail on it. Or two. And then uh, come up. To that mark, put a nail in it. All right, now we're just going to again. We got this little gap here, it's pretty nice up in here. We're just going to take our pry bar, pull it out a little bit, put a shame in it. Give it a couple nails, and that one's done. All right, on to the last two miters in this bathroom. Okay, um, the last piece in any room can be difficult only because you're dealing with two miters at one time, but let's see what we got before we start jumping to conclusion. I've already got this piece in. It's fastened. I'm on my mark. I'm going to put this piece on my mark too. Looks like it needs a little manipulation. Okay, so I got this side in. It's, it's looking good already. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab in the middle and push on this side. Bending it up. <laughs> Easier said than done. And we got a good fit. So, take my knocker. No nails. All 
I need to make an adjustment on this side. Right there. I'll give you an idea what they look up up close in a second. Just got to cut off the shim, and there's the room. <clears throat> it is possible to hand crown molding by yourself. Check it out.
Okay, now what I'm gonna do is uh, to walk you through each corner. Um, none of them have been uh, uh, manipulated yet. Um, as you can see, this one's close, but if you get up close to it, you'll notice that it's not perfect, and that's what I'm gonna do with each corner in this room. So stick around, and I'm gonna show you how I make each corner perfect. Okay, as you can see, this corner is not, it needs a little bit of work. Okay, now uh, one thing I do, that most people don't do, <clears throat> I'm gonna move the camera, <clears throat> is I use, uh, this is a 23 gauge pin nailer right here. Shoots very small nails, uh, very, very small. Give you an idea. See how small of a nail that is? I mean, it is, uh, it's, I mean, it really, you can't even see the holes once you're standing on the ground. Let me get close it up. Very, very tiny, nothing to it. And what it does is um, it allows us to get a very neat job when we're installing our crown, when uh, the homeowners get home whenever they look at your work, it doesn't look all messy, filled with um, holes. I mean, and um, you could literally brush right over the holes and the paint will... Right now, uh, let's get back to this corner right here. Okay, so the corner is loose. It's not really, as you can see, it's not really um, down yet, but that's good because uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some adhesive. I love this stuff, by the way. It dries rock hard. Um, it shrinks just like you want it to. Um, and in a perfect world, it looks like it's ready for paint before you... Uh, meet before you cock it. So, but now you can see I've got glue up all up underneath it. I'm gonna make my miter pretty. So, now I'm gonna make my miter pretty. And that is absolutely perfect right there. Just gonna hold it down a little bit. Give it a little bit of adjustment. Another tool, I call it a knocker. And it allows me to uh, knock it. Oh yeah, baby. Knock it. Absolutely beautiful seam. And the nails, uh, you know, at this point, once that adhesive sets up, the nails are irrelevant. Now I'm sure some of you are saying, oh, you know, it's not how you put up crown molding and, you know, you're cheating. I mean, my intent, is I don't want my molding moving. And I don't care what kind of nail you use. If you don't glue it, if you don't use adhesive, it doesn't matter what nail you use. So if that's the case, why do you need to use a big nail? Idea is we just want to hold it up there until the uh, miter dry, um, the glue dries and, uh, and everything's great. Let me get a, a close up in there for you. I mean, that is an absolutely perfect outside corner. All right, so let's go on to the next miter. And I'm gonna go through, there's one, two, three, 
four or five more miters in this room and I'm going to show you how I manipulate each one and make them work. Hold on. Okay, as you can see with this miter, uh, it doesn't need much work. But I will make a couple adjustments to it because it, it's not perfect. So I'm going to raise up this side a little bit. I'm going to knock this side down. And it, we're good here. we got a little gap going on there. So, now normally, normally I'm, I'm going to, um, most guys would just take their pry bar and go in there. And you see how I got that to close up? Actually, it would work better from this side. You see how, I don't know if you can notice that. It closed up. It's just, it's perfect at this point. Now, I could nail it a couple times here and it will hold. So when I let go, it doesn't do that. But what I prefer to do is I use these, um, actually they're tongue suppressors. <clears throat> I buy them at the dollar store. And yes, they're a dollar. I get maybe 24 in a pack. They go a long way because as you can see, what I'll do is I'll just actually come over here a little bit more. And I put that, it's a shim, yeah, it's a shim. But it assures me that nothing is gonna move. Give it a couple of little nails right there. Simply come back with my razor knife. Cut it off, throw it back in my pouch, I'll be able to use it again. A few more times actually. And this way you're assured that this miter is not going to move. Now, normally I would put the adhesive on now, but um, for time purposes, I am going to go to the next miter. As you can see from this miter here, it, um, camera keeps moving. Now remember, well, all I did was I, uh, I mean, I, I cut all the pieces and put them all up. I knew my measurements were good. And that's one thing you gotta keep in mind when you do crown molding and any type of carpentry, be confident in your tape measure, be confident in, in your measurements. And if you are confident with your measurements, you'll know that when you put that piece up or any of the pieces up, they're going to fit. But now, as you can see, this one's got some issues, but it's just low. So let me set the camera up in place and I'll show you how I put it together. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to knock it up. If you look close, you can see my pencil lines. Pull up a little bit. Each piece. And that is a tight ass miter. We're just going to nail it. Right, this is number five out of number six. And we're just about done. Oh, we're gonna take our trusty knockers. I'm gonna drop this piece down. You can see we got a little bit of that going on. I've got two options here. I could, I'll show you how I can make this one work. I'm going to nail it there and create a gap and then I'm going to knock this side down just a little I'm going to show throw a shim in there 
because that's where we want that to be. And then I'm going to throw a shim in this side right there. I'm going to put a nail in it just so it don't drop out. And it looks like we can put a shim in that side too. It seems like overkill. I mean, you're probably right. Most of you are probably thinking it was fine. We'll put a nail on this one too. And then we're gonna bring this side up just a little bit. And look at this, we're gonna throw a shim in this side too. Because we can. All right, now if you notice, this side is a little lower. So, what we're gonna do is tap this side up. That's it, right there. Maybe a little more. Right there. We'll give it a couple more nails. Then we're gonna simply cut our shims away. Nice sharp razor knife. And then just pop these four pieces right back in my pouch. Now, what we have here is two perfectly cut miters. But as you can see, I had to manipulate it to make it work. What that means is that the drywall, the corner, the ceiling wasn't perfect. But we are putting in two perfectly pe cut pieces of molding. So we had to manipulate the walls to make them accept the miter. And that's where most people fail, is they, they don't get that um, the walls are totally contorted. So we want our, all we're considered interested in is making our miter pretty. And if you look close, there's a slight gap at the top. You'll never see that. And then the gaps at the bottom. You're never gonna see that once it's glued and cocked. And it's not like I'm trying to hide, I'm not trying to hide anything. I mean, it is what it is. Everybody does this. Anybody that does crown molding that knows how crown molding works, this is how it works. If you wanna be good at it, you just have to understand that nothing is perfect and you have to make it as perfect as you possibly can. On to the last one. Okay, uh, last miter in this room. Uh, one of six in this room and as you can see it's got a few it's got some issues going on got a gap it's not lined up if you press on it you're gonna get that we're gonna make that work and I'm gonna show you how all right so the first thing we're gonna do is look how bad we are now I could tighten that up we're good at the height and again what we're dealing with is an imperfect corner because I'm confident both of these were cut at the same angle. And I'm going to show you in another video how I, I know for a fact. So I'm going to bang this one up. Throw a couple of nails in it. And what looks to be an absolute basket case I 
And we're gonna take out our trusty tongue suppressor. Get our little pry bar in there. And bam, the corner is fixed. Throw a couple more nails in it. And there you have it. All right, now I'm gonna show you how I finish off each and every room. What I'll do is, uh, I normally cut these the shims out as I go. Okay. And these pencil line, you see these pencil line marks here. What I'm doing is I'm putting up test pieces before I even do anything in the room. And it, it's a reference of where a perfect miter should go. So I basically got pieces about this big that have this inside corner 45 cut on them and I put them up and then I just simply pencil the marks out. So that's what you're seeing is that pencil line up in here. Okay, so again, we're using very small nails. I think I made that evident earlier. And I basically come through. I'm gonna do the whole room, every inch of every piece that I put in. And the reason why is that I know my miters aren't moving. They're never gonna move. It's that simple. They can't. I know this looks probably less attractive to some of you, but again, this is what a painter would do. But the difference is the painter's using just caulk. And no offense to painters, but most painters use garbage caulk. They use the cheapest stuff out there. And it's gonna crack. It's not doing anything. When you use an adhesive, okay, it's glue. Really strong glue. When you use an adhesive, along with just some tiny 23 gauge pin nails, I mean, as you can tell, where is this gonna go? It can't go nowhere. And any painter in the world would be proud or happy to be left with this miter to work with. Most painters um, that I've talked to that seen my work, you know, not to toot my own horn, but most painters love working behind me simply for the fact that it's not a, a bloody mess to make what my carpentry look good. And there you have it. So, so there's the room right there. And it looks like I've got about another maybe 15 minutes of adhesive left to go. And it's crowned. This is a bathroom. It's got a couple returns that are going to go in this corner here. And that corner there. Where the ceramic tile. Or whatever kind of tile it is. I'm going to show you how I start the rooms off. And let's get started. Okay. The first thing I do. So I've got these sample pieces here. Basically it's the crown molding that I'm using in this room. And I have my miters cut. Um, this is an outside corner here. And this is an inside corner here. So now what I do is I take these, the inside corner, and I put them in place where I wish the crown is going to be. And as you can see, 
that's where it wants to be. So now what this is going to allow me to do is uh, hang the crown molding by yourself. <clears throat> you know, this way it could be 14 feet. Well, as I'm putting this piece, the actual piece that's in, I just got to keep an eye on that pencil line there and know that I've got the right angle in this corner because I'm working this way in the middle of the wall and attaching it. <clears throat> okay, so something else to keep in mind is that you look, these two pieces fit pretty good. But you see that gap right there? That gap is gonna be in our finished product. <clears throat> the miter's nice, but we've got a gap. And that, what you're looking at is the ceiling, and that's just how it works. So I just basically take my pencil, again, nice and light, and just mark the bottom and the top. <clears throat> so as you can see, there's our mark. So through the entire room, I will do that in each corner. At this point, I take my tape measure and I can dig it out of my pouch. I turn my tape measure on. And if nobody has ever worked with one of these before, this particular product is made by Bosch. I highly recommend it. And I simply line that up down on the far side, get it perfect. Sometimes it takes two hands. I'm not sure you can see, that's 111 inches and 9 sixteenths. So I know this tape. So instead of, it's actually 9 sixteenths, so I'm gonna take a sixteenth off. I'm gonna call that 111 and a half. Now the opposite side stops at the ceramic tile and I got 77 and 7 eighths. So again, I got 77, 7 eighths. I'm gonna take a 16th off and that'll bring me to 13 sixteenths. Now the reason why I take a, a 16th off is that these are so accurate that if you cut it exactly to what it says, it's gonna to be too tight. I mean, it'll work, but I'd rather my molding be a little loose so I can work with it, you know, because I, you know what I mean? If it's exactly the same size, size if these corners are a little off, then I can't manipulate that crown molding. And I want, I want it to have a little bit of movement so I can make my miter perfectly. Again, this wall could be bowed out a little bit. You can't see it. It's drywall. You know, drywall guys put this mud in here and created this corner. It's not square. It's not level. Promise. All right, this will be the next room. It's this small hallway. Okay. Okay, so here are my two sample pieces. I'm gonna place them up in this outside corner. Make sure that it's possible. As you can see, that's very pretty. The bottoms are aligned somewhat. So all I'm gonna do is take my pencil very lightly and mark it. Mark it at the top, mark it at the bottom if you like. <clears throat> and then I do the same thing in all the inside corners. Take my sample pieces, put them up in place. Hold it with one hand, very lightly, mark. Now this house is getting painted, so it's not very important that I make light marks, but as a practice, <clears throat> I, I make my marks really light. 
All right, so I'll go through the whole room, very small room, and mark all my corners and then take my measurements, write them down, and then go out in the garage and make my cuts, and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm gonna start putting my pieces together. My first piece is gonna be this 53 and an eighth. I'm gonna line it up on my marks. Tack it in in the middle. Basically just holding it in place. Now my next piece is gonna be this longer piece over here. It is a 63 and 3 eighths. And I'll put that piece up in place. Don't really worry about it right now. I'm gonna tack it up too. And we'll come around to this side. Just my camera, if I can. This one is a 39, 39, 11. Looks good. Pack it up. Don't worry about that in a second. here and we are going to do this piece which is a 48 and a 16th that piece fits real nice tack it in the center <clears throat> and now we'll work on that corner There's one, two, three corners. <clears throat> so we will get this piece in. See what they look like. This piece is a little long. And it's still a little long, so I'll be right back. I'm gonna go make another cut. Okay, I made the adjustment to that piece. I know it's gonna fit this time, so I don't want my outside corners, I don't want any of my corners moving. So I've got my marks, so I'm basically going to stay just inside the line with some adhesive. And then I'm going to assemble my pieces. Again, after uh, you use adhesive, it makes the nails irrelevant, don't you think? Right, that's a it's a beautiful miter. Right there. Looks great. Right there. Okay, now 
this corner needs just a little bit of an adjustment. Still a little high. Right there. Very, very doable. I'll just make a little adjustment. Bring this side down a little bit. Bring that side out. Very pretty miter. Now we're going to come over to this one. the camera. Okay, you can see this one. Uh, camera's a little crooked, but oh well. I don't really want to wrench on this one too much because there's my outside corner that's already nailed and glued. So, it looks like I could just tap this side up right there. It's a little low here. Right there. Absolutely perfect. Now I'm gonna move the camera again. And you still we still got a little gap going on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a nail in it here. Hold this side. I'm gonna adjust this side that way. Basically, I'm going to take this side out, put a shim in it, go closer to the corner. It's always tighter in the corner. You can see that's where that one wants to be. I'm going to tap it up and hold it right there. Put a nail in the shim. And that is just about perfect, but I can make it a little better. So what we're going to do... It's hard to do this with the camera in my way. I can't really see it. Look at that. That's an absolutely perfect miter right now. It's not a big enough seam to get a shim in there, so I'm just going to pop a couple of nails. And that's it. Call that, one. call that one done. Okay. Another pretty miter. Alright, we'll go on to the next one. There's my pouch. All right, so basically that's how I go about it. Uh, and I think I'm gonna just leave it right there because from the information that I gave you earlier in the other bedroom, plus this information on how I actually lay the rooms out, I think you'll be able to have a pretty good idea on how I go about um, installing my crown molding. Listen, I'm Tony with Michigan Crown Molding. Hopefully we all learn something here. Like I said before, please comment, like, subscribe if you like. But I'm more interested in the comments. I'd like to hear your ideas from other, the other carpenters out there or homeowners that um, taught themselves something. We can all learn something and uh, improve our skills. And that's what it's all about. Crown molding really isn't that difficult. It just takes a little bit of knowledge and a little bit of tricks of the trade. We'll see you in the next video.